Praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it this morning for our worship at Grace Covenant Church of God in New Ellington. God bless you for being with us today. I'd like to remind you that our November prayer seed is to pray for our nation. We certainly need to do that at this time. So we would encourage you and emphasize again, let's pray for America and pray for our society. And I want to thank those who are supporting the ministry of Grace Covenant. Thank you for your faithful giving with your tithes and your offerings. Uh, two or three ways that you can give. You may give online at gccog.com on our homepage, or you can mail your contribution, your donations to Grace Covenant Church of God, Post Office Box 28, New Ellington, South Carolina. And you can also drop by the church office on Tuesdays between 9 to 12. Again, thank you so very much for those who are supporting the ministry financially. Let's turn to God's Word this morning. I want to speak to you today about pandemic thanksgiving. 
Now, the word thanksgiving has a, a double use. It can be used as a noun, uh, like Thanksgiving Day, or it's used as a verb, as something that we do, giving thanks. And particularly today, I want to talk about giving thanks to God. Being thankful during this COVID pandemic. Let's read a couple of scriptures. First of all, from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able, and I want you to listen very carefully to the, uh, the terms in this verse. And God is able to make every grace overflow to you so that in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. Now let's go back and look at that just in a moment, those terms. Make every grace overflow, which is an abundance of grace, that in every way, not just some ways, but in every way, and always, not just sometimes, but all the time, and in everything, not just some things, but in everything that you need, you may excel, go beyond, have abundance in every good work. What a powerful promise that he gives us and aspirations for us through the Holy Spirit. And then another verse in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. And he says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always for all things unto God. Again, no qualification on those terms. Always is always, and all things is all things. So thanks, praise, and worship can arise in some of the most unlikely places. Job on the ash heap in emotional, physical, spiritual pain gave thanks and worshiped God. Paul and Silas in jail with bleeding bodies and uncertain futures sang songs of Zion and worshiped God. Paul with his thorn in the flesh declaring, I glory in my infirmities so that Christ's power may rest upon me in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. And in Philippians 4, 1, he, 4 11, excuse me, he said, Paul said this, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. The early church at first gathered in the courts of the temple. When they weren't able to gather there, they gathered in homes, house to house, giving thanks to God, praising and worshiping. And when they couldn't meet there, when they were persecuted, they worshiped in the caves and the catacombs. And when they were dispersed across the world through persecution, the Bible says they went everywhere preaching and praising Jesus. No record of complaint. No record of murmuring, but triumphant praise and Holy Spirit power. Yes, for the children of God, the spirit of giving thanks is not limited to pleasant times, prosperous seasons, or painless living. Far from it. There's an illustration about Matthew Henry, the great Bible commentary. A man once stole his wallet. Henry said he went home and prayed this. Lord, I'm thankful to you that the man has never robbed me before. I'm thankful that although he took my wallet, he did not take my life. Although he took all I had, it wasn't much. And I'm glad that it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. I want you to listen. Matthew Henry knew how to make lemonade out of, a le out of lemons, how to be grateful and thankful despite a bad experience. By his thanksgiving during this episode, he transformed a bad experience into a perpetual memory of blessings. And it's still speaking to us today. He took what was bad and God made it good in his heart. As we grow in Christ, we learn to be grateful and to give thanks in bad times. And we learn that ingratitude toward God is the first step toward backsliding away from God. In Romans chapter 1, the Apostle Paul described the path of people in departing from God. Listen in verse, 20, verse 21. All they, the, although they knew God, and he's speaking about the people before the flood. He said, although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. They knew who God was. They knew that there was a creator. They knew that he had created the earth and that he had created them. But when they had that knowledge of God, they did not glorify him. They were not grateful in their hearts and they did not give thanks to him. 
If we take God's blessings for granted and neglect to give him thanks, neglect to worship him, neglect to acknowledge him, before we know it, we will wander from God. And then we'll wonder what happened to that glowing relationship that we once had with God. The enthusiasm will be gone and the joy will be gone and the strength will be gone. But when we learn to give thanks, even in the hard times, we learn and receive the joy of the Lord. That's why we should right now at this season with all that's going on in our country, with all that's going on in our world, we ought to give thanks with grateful hearts. Gratitude and thankfulness to God leads to peace, joy, and satisfaction. But you may say, Pastor, things are so negative around us. Look at all the strife and the bitterness and the wickedness and the unrest and on and on, the negative things that are going on in the world. But I would remind us all that even in the most negative times, there are still always reasons to give the Lord thanks. And I want to talk about a few of them this morning. Number one, God is with us. Romans chapter 14 and verse 8 says, If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or whether we die, we belong to the Lord. And when we lie down in physical death, we will rise again. That's not fatalism. That's faith. It's not finality. It's eternity that we're looking for. It's eternity that we're thanking God for. He's with us and we never need to fear. So we give him praise. We give him glory and we give him thanks even in the midst of everything that's going on. This earthly life around us with its shaking and shifting should not shift us from our focus or shake our faithfulness and neither should it silence our thanks. As I've told you often, thanks is verbal. It's out loud gratitude. We feel grateful, so we express thanks. I want to say it again. Thankful gratitude is inward. Amen. But praise and thanks is out loud gratitude. COVID is on right now. But I want to assure you that God is still on his throne. He still has his hand upon his children. He's still moving in the affairs of men and nations. Praise God. And he's going to bring us to the place that he wants us to be. To be. Amen. It's on, but he's on the throne. Because we ought to give thanks to the Lord because this too shall pass. The present situation in our nation and in our world will pass. Though it's tragic and it's horrific and our hearts go out to those that are being afflicted by the COVID, it has not come to stay. The present situation that you personally are in has not come to stay either. It too will pass no matter how negative, no matter how difficult, no matter how strange it has not come to stay. No matter how grinding or grueling or demanding or desperate, it will pass in God's time. The clouds will disappear. The dreary rain will cease. It can be tough to stand in a storm. It can be tough when you're drenched with the rain of circumstances that seem way beyond your control. And it can be tough when a flood of trouble threatens to overwhelm you. But may I give you and refresh your mind about a promise from God's Word when he said through the, through the prophet Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2, he said, I will be with you when you pass through the waters and when you pass through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. David said, at midnight, I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgment, Psalm 119, 62. At the darkest time of the night, in the depths of darkness, in the midst when darkness is before you in time and darkness is still ahead of you in time, David said, I will get up in that dark time and I will give thanks unto God. I will praise him no matter what is going on in my life. We need to have that determination today. Just lift your face and lift your faith toward heaven and thank God that the storm is not going to destroy you. In this life, danger is always around us. As God's children, we mitigate what we can and we trust God for the best or for the rest and the best. 
We do what we can to mitigate the harm. We do what we can under the circumstances and we trust God for the rest and we know that his best is going to come to us ultimately because we know he's working all things for our good. That's an interesting concept in the word and it's an interesting concept in the words of that verse. It says that he is working the word there means he's designing, he's crafting like a skilled craftsman. He's putting things together in the way that they're supposed to be. He's putting things together according to a pattern. He's got a plan for your life and for my life and for his children and for his people. And he's putting every piece together and he's cutting it and filing it and, and sanding it, so to speak, in the spirit so that every piece will fit perfectly and it's working to our ultimate good. Romans 8, 28. Like a skilled carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter when he was in this world, raised in the home of a carpenter when he was in a human form and in a human body. He's the author and finisher of our faith, and he is crafting our spiritual house, our spiritual being through all that happens in our lives, the good things that we perceive as good and the bad things as well that he allows to come is making that pattern to be fulfilled. In your darkest hours, take heart and give him thanks. We can also give thanks because we have the opportunity to shine the light of hope in all the darkness. In Jesus, there's always the hope, the anticipation, the expectation of deliverance. The sharing of that hope is why we're here. That's why the church is here. That's why you and I are here. It's our calling. It's the message of hope in Christ that the world is crying for. Don't under, they don't know that many of them as yet. That's why the Lord has left a witness. But there's a crying need in the heart of mankind for peace and for assurance and for an anticipation of something beyond this life. And that only comes through the knowledge of God, through the knowledge of his word and of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The sharing of that hope is our calling. The message of hope in Christ is what we share. Jesus went everywhere with a flaming torch of hope held high. It was what inspired Bartimaeus to cry out to Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And his hope was fulfilled in Matthew 10, 48, when Jesus gave him back his sight. He gave the adulterous woman hope and new life when Jesus, I believe without a doubt, softly and compassionately said to her, I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. Go, your life is changed. In John chapter 8, verse 11, he touched the untouchable leper in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 3, who pleaded with the Lord and said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus replied saying, I will be clean. But he stretched out his hand and and touched him as he said it. The untouchables received hope from Jesus Christ. He sent that man back home with a normal life healed of leprosy. He spoke healing and forgiveness to the lame man in Mark chapter 2. And instead of his friends carrying him out on a cot, they brought him in, four friends, one on each corner of the cot, I suppose. And they tied ropes to it, tore a hole in the roof and let him down right in front of Jesus. And you remember Jesus looked at him and said, your sins be forgiven you. And the Pharisees rose up and said, only God can forgive sins. And Jesus said, which is it easier? Be healed or your sins be forgiven you. And the man was instantly healed and rose up. And the Lord said, take up your bed and walk. Praise God. That man left that night. Care. They brought him in on a cot and they carried him on a cot. But he went out that night walking with his friends, carrying his cot. Praise God. And can you imagine the thanks that was going on with that man and those four friends and everyone in that house that night that was listening to Jesus? as he went home. I can only imagine the shouts of praise and thanksgiving. In every bad, sad, and tragic situation, there is a reason for thanksgiving. 
Look for the lessons in difficult times. It's something that I've learned and the Lord's crystallized that in my mind in the last few months. Look for the lessons in the difficult times. There are lessons in the good times as well. But often we forget about the fact that the Lord is teaching us in the hard times. Look for the lessons. An unknown poet from the past gave us this treasure that you may have heard. He said, I asked for strength and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom, and the Lord gave me problems to solve. I asked for courage, and God gave me dangers to overcome. I asked for patience, and God placed me in situations where I was forced to wait. I asked for love, and God gave me troubled people to help. I asked for favors, and he gave me opportunities. He said, I received nothing that I wanted, but I received everything that I needed. My prayers have been answered. May I tell you, if you're walking faithfully with the Lord, if you're serving him, the circumstances that come into your life are funneled through your faith in God. The Lord Jesus is working his perfect will in you. The craftsman is putting all the pieces together. And he's doing that with us right now, giving thanks. We ought to give thanks that he always, in all things, provides exactly what we need. We ought to be thankful because we have the opportunity now to comfort and bless those who are hurting. Anxiety, desperation, heartache, and grief are all around us. We can share the peace, the promise of peace that comes in knowing Christ. And we can share the promise of liberation from bondage and desperation. And we can share the heart healing that Jesus brings to the brokenhearted. And we can share the truth of God that dispels grief and gives comfort. Thank God that we have the message of eternal hope to give to the hopeless and the message of eternal life to give to those who are dead in trespasses and sins just like we were before we knew Christ. He can give that hope to those that we'll share the word with. We ought to be thankful that the treasure, that we have the treasure of being led by the Holy Spirit in all of life. There can be a powerful anointing and revelation gathered in the midst of incredible pain. There can be an incredible revelation given and light given in our lives in the midst of extreme darkness. Stephen, while he was being stoned, saw heaven open and the Lord Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Jesus hanging on the cross, the Bible said, and it, it was in his life as well as he walked this earth. But surely as he was breathing out his life on the cross, he looked forward, amen, and saw the joy that was set before him, the possibility of every man, woman, and child that would come to him, come to the Father by him, could be saved. The martyrs through the ages and still today, dying, glorifying Christ, singing songs of victory and forgiving those that have murdered them even as they did it. Oh, give thanks for the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Spirit that upholds His children, gives us voice, gives us message, gives us the power to touch lives and works through us to bring them to Christ. We ought to be thankful because we're assured of victory. Amen. Listen. But thanks be unto God, who always, in all times, good times, bad times, rich times, poor times, fear, fearful times, fearless times, always causes us to triumph. I did a little research on that. There's something about that word triumph that stirred me. And it also, again, we're looking at absolutes here. Always. He always causes us to triumph. But it means he leads us in an exuberant celebration and procession as we have won the victory over our enemy, over every foe, and over every circumstance. He always causes us to march about in victory. Thank God we ought to give him praise. We have so much to praise him for. We don't know when our present test is going to be over. Scripture says in Acts chapter 1 verse 7, as the disciples, he was about to leave and the disciples 
uh, were asking, when shall these things be and when uh, shall your return be and, and when will the kingdom be and all the questions that they had been asking along, all along. And he replied to them, it is not for you the time, to know the times nor the seasons which the Father has put in his own hand. The Lord has not revealed to us exact times about some things. And we don't know when our present circumstances with the pandemic will be over. But we know that we can give thanks in the midst of it and we can walk in victory. We don't know. We don't know what may come to us tomorrow, what may even come to us before the day dawns tomorrow. But we know that we can thank him in the midst of it all. We know this, Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Paul's word to the Philippians in chapter 1 verse 6 speaks to us today in our circumstance right now. He said, I am sure and confident that he who has started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Here, now, because of that promise, we can lift our voices in thanksgiving. Thank God you are working all things to our good. He is working all things to our good. All things through his favor is going to bring us ultimately absolute victory pandemic thanksgiving it's a verb amen it brings us complete victory in the midst of the pandemic in the midst of our personal trials in the midst of whatever life may bring to us we can lift our voice and thank God so I want us to know today I want you to know today and be reminded today that he is our victory praise God he's with us Praise God. He's going to keep us. This also shall pass. And when this is passed and some other difficult or trial comes along, we're going to stand the test because we trust him and give him praise and that we can shine as a light in the lives of others and that the Holy Spirit and the Word of God is leading us and that no matter what it may look like, we're walking right now in the victory he won for us at Calvary. I remember the illustration of some men that were building on a cathedral. He asked one man, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm driving these nails in these planks. He walked on and he found another man and he said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm carrying these supplies to the men that are working inside. He finally came to a man who was laying stone and he asked the man, what are you doing? He said, I'm building a, th a cathedral. I'm building a place of worship. Amen. Sometimes our praise is colored by our attitude. As a matter of fact, most times. What it is is that we ought to know the sense of gratitude for what God is doing for us in the midst of difficult times. And that gratitude will rise up, as I said earlier, into out loud praise and thanksgiving. And that's what brings the joy of the Lord in Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you to give thanks to the Lord. It's amazing sometimes when we're really down. All of us have been there. When difficult times are going are on, maybe we're just uh, discouraged. Maybe things aren't going like we thought they would. Maybe God seems far away and that sometimes happens through the circumstances of life and our humanity. But we remember and we begin to praise him and praise itself lifts us up out of the doldrums, out of that which is stymieing us spiritually and lifts us up into a place of strength and power. God lives in the praise of his people. So I encourage us today. I encourage you today and myself as well. Let's lift our voices in thanksgiving during this season. It's Thanksgiving, the noun. It's a holiday. It's a time we set aside to thank God. And that's a good thing. Thanksgiving ought to be the lifestyle of every child of God, though. As we enter into this uh, special season of Thanksgiving, let us be sure that we reemphasize our thanks and praise to God. And let folks know and let people hear our praise to him. I want to pray for you and pray for us right now. A prayer of thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, we thank you. I thank you today for the things that you have given into our lives 
through the hard times. And you've given us also lessons and treasures and blessings in the good times, but you give them to us all the time when we trust you. And we thank you, Lord, tonight. We thank you this morning. We thank you today that, that you are with us, that you are not far off, but you are close at hand. In fact, you are in us through the Holy Spirit abiding in us, and we thank you for it. And we thank you, Father, that the present situation that may be challenging to us personally and that is challenging our nation and the world. It's going to pass in your own good time and we thank you for it and we thank you because you've given us the opportunity and the blessing and the privilege of letting your light shine through us. Let it shine, Lord. Let our hearts be a, 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 a fountain of light so that others may know the hope of Christ. And I thank you that the Holy Spirit is guiding us, watching over us, teaching us and leading us into the deep things of God and giving us everything that we need in every situation. And I also thank you, Lord, and we thank you this morning that no matter what it may look like, we are walking right now in the victory of the Word of God and of the power of Jesus' work at Calvary. Today, not just in the future, but right now, this moment, and every moment as we follow you and live lives of faith and thanksgiving, that we are walking in victory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you thanks out of the gratitude of our hearts for all your blessings. Now may every person, every ear that hears these words today, may you drive it home to our hearts. May it find good soil and may the seed of the word grow and bring forth a harvest of fruit that you have designed. And we thank you for your blessings, Father. And we thank you for all that you are to us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Praise God. Amen and amen and amen. I want to thank you this morning for joining us for worship. And I pray that the seed of the word will, will bring forth a fruit in your life, bring forth joy and thanksgiving. The entrance of his word gives light and light brings joy. So may it be true today. May it be true in your life. And let me say again for the family of Grace Covenant, Thank you for joining us and thank you for those that bless us through your prayers, through your concern, and through your attendance. We thank you. God bless you until we see you again.